very exciting thing for us to be able to do here to bring the young guys finally to uh, the TV airwaves and give them a little chance to see what the future holds for Greenfield and, and Frontier Football. Well, I think it's a great thing, and it's a great little feeder program for both schools. Of course, we know that numbers are definitely down on the high school level, and it's nice to be able to see a bunch of these youngsters out here having some fun, and this is going to be a great day of football for both the games that we're going to do back-to-back -back here today. And, Chris, just want to say thank you to the FCAP for being able to be here. It really is a true treat for these kids to be able to know that in the next uh, few days they're going to be able to go online and be able to see themselves playing some football. That's going to be great. Now, we have two games for you today. We have a Pee Wee Division game and then we have a Junior Division game. This is involving the Greenfield Bulldogs against the Frontier, I guess we call them the, the Frontier Red Hawks. And this is, is this Pop Warner? Is that the... the, the it's Suburban League Suburban Football. League football. Yep. Okay. So we got Suburban League Football and they run pretty much a very different type of a format. What they do is for the Pee Wees is they do running time. So it's running time, 10 minute quarters of run time and then they have like a really short little half time and then for the juniors they end up running eight minutes of stop time but as you know chris there's not a lot of throwing so the clock pretty much moves pretty quick these games will probably run about an hour apiece. so yeah and it's, it's going to be a lot of fun to see and you'll see some you'll hear some some familiar names the great thing about these two programs and the great thing about these areas is you have families you know that continue the tradition and, and the thing about a, a great thing about a peewee program like this is that as you mentioned Numbers are down in football right now, and this gives these kids invaluable experience. So when they come up to the middle school and eventually the high school level, they've had you know many, many years of competitive experience. This is competitive, but not over-competitive. It's, it's an exhibition. It's, it's, like, it's like the equivalent of peewee hockey. It's a chance to learn the game, learn the fundamentals, and then when it comes time for the big stage in high school or possibly college, they're ready to go. Absolutely. And, you know, I was just taking a look at the roster, and, you know, Scott Dredge, uh, former head coach of Frontier, his kid's playing. You got Chris LaPointe, his son Jaden is uh, also part of the team of Frontier. He's a head coach over at Turner's Falls. So, you know, you got a lot of these younger players whose parents have been very involved in football and they're all here today to be able to be a part of this game. Why don't we run down while we have a second, some of the, the, the names on the Pee Wee rosters for these teams and why don't we start with uh, the Frontier team. Okay, uh, for the Frontier Pee Wees, we have William Barbeau. We also have Patrick Belcha. We have Cody Camp, Landon Clark, Lucas Day, Braden Dion, Alexander Duda, Crosby Fay, Chase Green, Matthew Gilbo, Max Hunter, Connor James, Jaden LaPointe, Luca LeMay, Ryan Pear. Also, we have Angel Ruiz Scott and Romeo Ruiz Scott. Also, we have Finn Savage, Brady Shearer, Ty Skrosky, also Nolan Stafford, Matthew Talega, and we have Brody Whittle. Those are the players for the Frontier team. Now, for the Franklin County Pee Wees, the roster goes as such. Jonathan Ainsworth, uh, Brayden Archambault, Gavin Arsenault, Davian Bala, Jacob Bartolone, D'Angelo Brown, Ethan Berg, Corbin Conway, Jamison Gaffey, Tyler Gerard, Owen Hill, Jalen Hurd, James Julian, Tavon Page, Hunter Parker, Caleb Pizzuto, Tobias, I believe that's Fanev, Fanev? Fanev, yep. Fanev, yep, right, and Dustin Reed, Jose Sanchez, Oliver Schwenger, Braden Schoenwhite, Jackson Silva, Alexander Smith, Hunter Stacy and Aaron Turner. And those are the players, and you'll be hearing those names off and on as we go through. But this is uh, going to be exciting. Plus, we have a full complement of cheerleaders out there. And that's the other th great thing about this. It's not just a, a program uh, that is for, for football players, but also young cheerleaders get to well, they're in that craft as well. Yeah, and you know, they're nice because they end up having their own cheerleading competitions that they get a chance to get involved in as well, Chris. So the cheerleaders are getting the experience. The football players are getting experience. The kids get to be able to get out and play some fall football, which is always fun. And they get to play on the big field, which is even better. You know, here at Frontier and also at Greenfield High School and all these other fields that we have are all now under lights. Who would have thought that the Franklin County Tech is finally under lights now, Chris? Uh, that's a great story. <laughs> and, and, it's, it, but, and again, I, I love the, uh, the Friday night lights thing. The tough part about that is Saturday afternoon football was always a lot of fun. I mean, when we were growing up, in Greenfield, we never had lights at, at Vets Field. Everything was a Saturday game. 
and there was an aura to that. But uh, but the Friday night thing, I mean, it, it's just it's something special. And as we saw the other night with the Frontier Greenfield game, I mean, packed house, great game went down to the wire. I mean, that's what it's all about. You know, and it's funny because Frontier jumped off to a big lead, and I was taking a look at it because I ended up working on Friday. I took a look, and I saw that Greenfield ended up scoring 16 points in the fourth quarter oh. to really make a game of it. And they came up a little bit short, but you got to give credit where credit's due, where Greenfield was literally getting pounded, and they were able to at least show up in the fourth quarter and at least try to make a game of it at least. And uh, when all was said and done, Frontier still picked off the victory, so a nice win for them. A little bit of revenge after their... Uh, upset of Greenfield beating them last year when they brought their Super Bowl team down to Holyoke High School. And we'll never forget that no. as long as we live. <laughs> I mean, my, feet are, my feet are still frozen from that team. <laughs> well, we have a sec. We also want to thank our underwriters, by the way, who are making this a broadcast possible. We have a lot of people that have stepped up to support the little guys. Let's get them up this way. Yeah, we want to thank these underwriters for helping us out here today. We want to thank Terraza at the Country Club of Greenfield, also by Dunkin' Donuts with locations in Greenfield, Sunderland, and South Deerfield. Also by Bobby C's DJ Service, Attorney Leah Phillips of Greenfield, and also CPA Alex Siano in Greenfield. Alec Eckel is the executive producer, by the way, of, of today. And who you, who's working with you, Alec? Megan Self, that's right. She, she was actually on our first broadcast uh, of the Frontier football season at the Pittsfield game. So Megan Self, Alec Eckel are here today, and it's a beautiful day in South Deerfield. And uh, we should also mention that, uh, well, we have a second, that uh, we've got a full slate of Frontier games. Uh, we've got a variety of different teams we're going to be covering, obviously football and uh, soccer and field hockey. So it's going to be another big, big spring, or big fall, rather, for uh, Frontier Athletics here. And we'll be covering as much of it as possible on FK. Well, that's fantastic. I got to tell you, Chris, it's really wonderful that you guys do a lot with the sports. And I just want to say that I've uh, had the pleasure of being able to be on the FCAT every week. And I thank you for having it with the Franklin County Varsity Sports Report. And you know what's funny is uh, since we're doing our game here, normally we talk about all the high school kids during the show. But I'm going to throw a little thing about our broadcast on the show this week and just be able to say a little kudos to all these kids for the hard work that they're going to put in here today. Now Greenfield won the toss. They will receive and they'll be moving left to right uh, during the course of this, again, first peewee game. As Bob mentioned, this is 10 minute running time and uh, I'm not sure what to expect. I, I know I've called peewee hockey before. Yeah. I've never called peewee football before so this is going to be interesting. And yeah. It does look as though that the field's a little bit shortened the goal line is actually out about where the regular 10-yard line is. So we're right. working with an 80-yard field, um, which is which makes sense. I mean, <laughs> these, are not, these are not high school athletes. But I'll be curious. You mentioned um, you know, we'll see a lot of uh, a ground game here. And I think, you know, it's always good to throw when you can. But in terms of learning the fundamentals, a good ground game is crucial to any winning football strategy. And to learn it now at this age, I think, is, uh, is a good opportunity to to really sharpen those skills. Absolutely. Matter of fact, it's funny that you say that because when I had a chance to talk with head coach Scott Dredge, who ends up being the head coach of the juniors team for Frontier, he said, Bobby C., it's all about running, and then we pass when we want to. <laughs> That's right, exactly. <laughs> when we want to. So I, I liked how we said that. that it looks really like great. the coach is remaining on the field. Although I'm not sure if this, this this is a regular thing where the coaches stay out there. Must be. Maybe maybe it's just for maybe it's just for defensive purposes only. Not sure. And the kick is off. It's a short kick. It's going to go out of bounds at about the 41 yard line, which is where I, I guess they get the Welcome chance to, to re-kick it if they want, or we'll see. With the PB game. I think it's good to have the coaches out there as to instruct I do these too. kids. It makes yeah, a lot looks of sense. like looks like the coaches are out there for uh, for instructing the kids, which is great. And they're going to spot that ball at the 45-yard line, so it'll be first and ten for the Greenfield team. And it looks like the uh, quarterback for Greenfield is number three, and I think that's uh, I think that's Gavin Arsenal. Gavin Arsenal. Yep. Weighing in at a big 73 pounds. I love this. I love this. They even have a little weight here for the kids, Exactly. Too. That's awesome. So we got some weights for, for most of the kids anyway. All right, let's see uh -huh. what we set up here. Arsenal under center. And he's uh, got one back and 
one receiver in the slot. And in motion, and he's going to roll out on first down. Arsenal fires it downfield, incomplete. And the pass was intended for number 13, Davian By uh, Bala. Bala. Yeah. Bala, right. Yeah, Davian Bala. Nice, nice try, though, by Bala. He almost had it. That wasn't a bad throw, either. No, he was, I was afraid that maybe that might be knocked down, batted down by the Frontier secondary. But that'll bring up second and 10 from the 45. And they must run the uh, clock from the field. It looks like the referees must run the clock from the field from what I see. Right. Second and 10. We have no idea how much time is left in the first quarter. Again, this is running time, which means the clock doesn't stop. Nice day for it, though. Gorgeous day and a nice crowd. Nice yeah. crowd. A lot of the parents are under the tents, though. That's smart. Which is very smart. Very Because it's a warm day, 85 degrees today. Again, same formation. Once again in motion, and the pitch goes on the right side. And positive territory. And that is run by Caleb Pizzuto. And he gets up to near first down yardage. Number and a nice tackle three, made on the play by Red Frontiers Red number 33, John Majewski. That's a gain of about seven. That'll bring up third and three from the 48-yard line of Frontier. And you're watching Pee Wee Football. Here on Frontier Community Access Television, Chris Collins and Bobby C. And you're looking at the future. If you're a, if you're a Frontier football fan, if you're a Franklin County football fan, a lot of these kids are going to see them in years to come on the gridiron for their respective high schools, we hope. Split backfield, actually a full house backfield, behind the quarterback, Arsenal. And a whistle and a flag. We might have had some motion on the left side of the line, I think. Ooh, and that was a big penalty right there because that's gonna set him back five yards. It was only third and three. Now it's third and eight. Yeah. That's a tough one right there for Greenfield, the Bulldogs. They really were in a good position right oh, there. The now the big question is, is if they don't convert, what are they gonna do on fourth down? Yeah. Will they punt the ball or will they try to you know, pin them back or will they end up going um, for it on fourth down? We'll have to see what happens, but this is a big third down play for the Bulldogs right now. Third and eight from the 47 of the Franklin County Bulldogs. And yeah, I'll be curious to see, maybe a, maybe a pass play here, and then I guess our friend Gavin has shown he can throw the ball. That was a pretty good first down pass play. You know, I always crack the joke that uh, when you gotta go 15 yards back to do a huddle, I used to always tell my <laughs> guys in men's football, Cavs don't run on Sundays. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Cavs don't run on Sundays, baby. And the motion to the left, and the pitch. Nice move. Nice oh, and he's move. going He's for going it, all the way down the left sideline. And I think that's going to be a touchdown. Wow, what a third down call. Let's get the number on Davian that. Davian Bala with a nice run right there. That turned out to be a, well, we're running an 80-yard field, right? Yeah. So a 43-yard touchdown right there by Bala. Davian Ball on third and eight with the pitch. Got a great hole on the left side. Got the sideline. That kid's got some jets. Write that name down. You're going to be seeing it, I think, a lot more in the future. What a great run down the sidelines. And nice blocking right there, too, by the Bulldogs <laughs> offensive line. Made a nice hole right there for the kid, and he just took it down the sidelines. Really great job right there by that youngster. So they're going to set up, it looks like, for a two-point conversion. I don't think you're going to see a lot of kicking here. Yeah, they'll definitely, everything's probably going to be going for two. And you know what's funny? Most of the high schools these days, Chris, as you know, most of the kids, they're go, most of the teams go for two now. And it's actually, a, it's fundamentally a good exercise to always run as many plays as possible, and two-point conversion is just an extra play. Fumble on the snap, and Arsenal's going to have to fall on it. So tough exchange from center, but we'll come back up the field with the score. Franklin County 6. Frontier Nothing, you're watching Suburban League Pee Wee Football on Frontier Community Access Television. And we want to thank our underwriters. Thank them so much for being able to participate with us here today. Taraz at the Country Club of Greenfield. Thank you so much, Abaz. Also by Dunkin' Donuts, the Mata family with locations in Greenfield, Sunderland, and South Deerfield. Also by Bobby C's DJ Service. Also attorney Leah Phillips of Greenfield. 
and CPA Alex Cyano in Greenfield. I Thank just, them very much. I just stopped by the junk on the way up here. Yeah, so did I. I always get my special unsweetened iced tea, and you're a green tea guy. I'm a green tea guy, but this today I got a, a, a iced coffee with extra skim. <laughs> extra For skim. obvious reasons. Yes, yes. Well, as you know, I, uh, I've gone... I've gone into a big change in my life, too, big guy. Yes, you have. And uh, it's a huge difference. And I'll tell you, the unsweetened iced tea with the lemon has been uh, one of my go-tos now besides all the water I drink. So now The ball's spotted at the 40-yard line, so it's not going to don't. I guess they don't kick off after a score. Nope. So Frontier gets their first crack on offense. The <laughs> Frontier <laughs> Juniors, <laughs> double wing formation. And the pitch goes on the right side. And that one was going to... I believe, did you get the number on that? Looks like number 48. So 40, 48, number 48 for Frontier. And I don't see that number, so I have to look and see. Loss of about three. Loss of about two as we bring up second and 12. Nice job right there by the defense of the Bulldogs. Picking up a nice sack on the play brings up a now second down and 12 for Frontier. Yeah, they really crashed in. It looked like almost like a blitz, like they read it beautifully. And so Frontier's got some work to do here as they're second and 12. Ball spotted at the about the 37 and a half yard line. Same double wing formation. And pitch, oh. nobody there, fumble, and it's recovered by Franklin County as it, the pitch went to a back that just wasn't there, Bob. No. Matter of fact, uh, the back that they were trying to get the ball to was the one who had the first one, which was Landon Clark. And Clark was not there. And the pitch ended up being a misdirected play. And now the Bulldogs have the ball in great field position. They have it now first and 10 from the 35 yard line of Frontier. Yep. And it's actually the 25 because I'm sorry, 25. But you're, you're right. right. Yeah, it's, it's that's going to be the challenging part of calling this game because uh, there is a 10. There is a 10 uh, yard difference. That's right. So we're back to the 10 yard line so being the goal line. 25 yards from pay dirt for the Franklin County Bulldogs, who could go up by two scores here with the right play. This Bulldogs team, by the way, is uh, playing really good right now. They've uh, they've been very successful in their first couple games this season. And it looks like the uh, kids are doing a nice job. They got a nice line. I mean, the big boys on the line. Yeah. And uh, they, you know, I always tell people that if you got a good offensive line and you got a kid who can run, it's lights out at this age. I'll tell you that right well, now. I think it's lights out at any, at, at any level of, of football. Even the high school. We saw that last year with the Frontier Redhawks and Landry and Wordley, and, and they were uh, huge. They were just two thousand points, two thousand yard runners, and the pitch in motion goes on the left side to Aaron Turner, who picks up maybe a yard. Nice the tackle 24th. right there on the play by number 69 of Frontier, Patrick Beecha. So that's gonna bring up second and about nine. We've got about a half a yard, it looks like. And good pursuit by Frontier. Franklin County leads 6 0 on a touchdown run by Davian Bauer. I formation now for the first time. And uh, there's a movement on the play by the uh, Greenfield Bulldogs, uh, Franklin County oh, Bulldogs, sorry. so that's going to set them back five yards. Yep. It looked again like a little bit of a false start. And this is the stuff you learn. This is the stuff you learn at this level. You make some mistakes here and there, and you learn from them. So now you're back in the hole now. Now you're at second down and 15. Yeah, about 15 from the just inside the, the 40, call it the 30-yard line of the Frontier Redhawks. This is the first of two games. We have a junior division game coming up immediately following SP League. Well, let's hear it for the Frontier cheerleaders. Nice job by the ladies. Doing a great job down there. Excellent job by the ladies. Glad to be able to be able to give them some kudos here during the game as well. They're working just as hard as the boys are. Full house backfield behind Arsenal. And the give again goes to Bala again. Bala again. And he's up ahead. He gets the, the penalty yardage back in a couple of more. Yeah, nice run right there. Picked up almost nine yards on that play. Very nice job right there by Bala. 
Yeah. That was a bit of a almost a draw play, a little bit of a delayed handoff, give the line some time to open up a hole for him, and they made the most of it. Third and eight now from the 33, call it the 23 of Frontier. Tell you what I do right now, Chris, is I'd uh, I throw I go to the air. Why not? Why not? You're you're at third. You're in. You're definitely two town territory. I'd give it a shot. I, I would try something a little different. I formation again behind Arsenal. Another movement again. And Fifty-two again. on the Bulldogs. He ended up moving. Ball start on the Bulldogs. That would be Hunter Parker. Yep. And it's five yards back, so it brings up third and about 13. Although, wait a second, there's a whistle. Timeout called for Franklin County. We'll take a quick break and once again run down our underwriters. All right. We want to thank our underwriters. Thank you so much to Taraz at the Country Club of Greenfield. Also by Dunkin' Donuts, the Mata family with locations in Greenfield, Sunderland, and South Deerfield. Also by Bobby C's DJ Service, attorney Leah Phillips of Greenfield, and by CPA Alex Siano of Greenfield. So it's going to bring up third and about 13. Looks like they're uh, giving the kids a water break. Not a bad idea. No, not on a warm day like today, we don't want any of the kids to drop on us here. Well, this is the concern, too, in a, you know, a situation like this. Of course, you see it at the high school level, too. I mean, early season games, you see a lot of cramping that occurs Yep. when uh, – when it gets real warm, real humid. This, this though, is, is not bad. I mean, yep. I wasn't sure what to expect because we get that hurricane that's always messing up weather patterns, and we're getting a little bit of a, a more humid. It's still late September, but we're still getting humid weather, which is unusual. Yeah, very humid weather, and, you know, temperatures in the mid-80s today, 80 degrees tomorrow, and then they're calling for the thunderstorms because of Florence right. and the storm that is sort of making its way, creeping up the east coast. That's going to make it for a damp day on Tuesday. So here we go. Third and 13. And once again in motion goes Bala. He gets stood up, breaks the tackle, continues ahead and gets back to about the original first down, maybe a yard ahead. Well, now they're in a situation where it's uh, fourth down and 10. And of course, you got to go for it. I mean, look where you are. Yeah, I don't so. think you're going to punt here, but absolutely not. I'll be curious to see what kind of hang time, what kind of a punting game these teams have if they ever do that. I think you're uh, sitting in a pretty good position right now. The Bulldogs are up 6 nothing, and they do have an opportunity here to be able to not even, I would go for it because even if you don't make it, you still have pinned Frontier in a tough spot. They got a long way to go to be able to score. All right, fourth and about 10, as Bob said. Ball spotted at the 35, which is really the 25. And again, split backs, full house backfield. Looks like a running play. And the pitch goes to Bella again. And he's hitting the backfield and brought down. Great pursuit by Frontier. Oh, fantastic job. Hey, we got to give credit where credit's due. Great play right there by Frontier. Their, their defense did a really great job on that play. Being stopped in the backfield for Red Hawks. So it's going to be first and 10 from the 40. And Frontier will get the ball back with a chance to put a sustained offensive drive together. That last offensive drive didn't go very well, but. Nice job right there by Ty Strosky. Made a big play yeah. right there for Frontier. And that was a big stop. Now Frontier hopefully can gain from that momentum, Chris with their second chance at offense. A little bit sloppy on that first series. Hopefully things can improve for them right here. And again, double wing formation for the Frontier Red Hawk Peewees. And it's gonna be quarterback sneak up the middle and we got about a yard it looks like. Yeah, well that was a great job right there. One of the big guys from Greenfield, number 55. Chris, he really did a nice job being able to clog up that hole for Greenfield. So number 55 for Greenfield ended up really clogging up the hole and did a nice job. Brandon Dion, I believe, is a quarterback. Though it is tough to, to see those numbers from here. Yeah. 
because they're such small bodies. <laughs> that's the thing. That's that's what makes it tough, you know. A nice job right there by D'Angelo Brown. He did a really great job being able to clog up the hole there and make that defensive stop. So right now it's second down and just about nine, Chris. Double wing again. Inside handoff. Straight up the middle and brought down at about the 43, which is next to the 33. And a nice job right there by the Bulldogs once again. Boy, they got some big boys. That right there was number 50. A kid by the name of Jamison Gaffey. Boy, another big guy from Greenfield. Uh, did a nice job for the Bulldogs there. And he ended up uh, making the stop on that play, bringing up a third down and about seven for Frontier. Let's see what Dion, who's one of the captains of this team, decides to do. Third and about seven. <clears throat> Double wing again. And a counter run the other way. Nice pitch, oh and a nice escape. Good break on the tackle. Down the left sidelines. Oh, Cuts a back. nice move. And it's gonna be a touchdown for Frontier. Oh, fantastic play right there. Great run by number 32. Ryan Pear. Ryan Pear picks up a huge run on the play. And that brings up an excellent 6-6 tie between these two teams. Beautiful cutback, too, well, by that was That was the key. I mean, he did a great job to get the outside, but that cutback fooled everybody, and that's how he got away and broke in for six. Oh, that was fantastic. What a nice play there by Ryan. That was a great shot right there. I hope you got that bad boy on the camera because that was a nice move by that young man. So that ties the score at six, so frankly, our Frontier can take their first lead if they can convert this two-point conversion. Yeah, this is a big two-point conversion for Frontier to be able to pick up the two-point lead. Ball spotted at the right hash mark. Same formation, though. The double wing slot has widened out a bit. And he's going to roll and throw it. And he fires it into the end zone. And nice he got it. Catch. Two point conversion. What complete. a nice play right there from Dion. That was a great throw. No way, well, you, you could tell that when they widened out that wing formation, they were spreading a bit. And I am not surprised they threw it. So we come back up the field. Frontier has the lead. Frontier 8, Franklin County 6. This is Pee Wee Football on Fletcher Community Access Coast. And we want to thank our underwriters, Terraza at the Country Club of Greenfield. Thank you, Abaz, also by Dunkin' Donuts, the Mata family. They have locations in Greenfield, Sunderland, and South Deerfield. Also by Bobby C's DJ Service, attorney Leah Phillips of Greenfield, and by CPA Alex Ciano in Greenfield. And Leah Phillips wanted us to mention and remind Alec Eckel, the executive producer, to get some shots of the cheerleaders. All right. uh, because we want to make sure we get them some equal time on the air as well. Yes, and uh, we want to hear it for the cheerleaders. They have done a nice job, both teams. Thank you, ladies. Matter of fact, I think i got a couple of uh, cheerleader names here for the Frontier. Uh, I'll have to see what we can do to rally those up so we can be able to hopefully mention their names during our broadcast. First and 10 for Franklin County at their own 40. Make it the, really, the, in reality, the 30 as they're going to try and come back and answer after Frontier with a touchdown run and a two-point conversion pass makes it 8-6. Gavin Arsenal under center. He has Motion now, he's gonna roll out on first down. Avoids a tackle, keeps it broken play, and he's brought down at about the original line of scrimmage. Oh, and that's a nice tackle right there by Frontier's number 32. Nice job by number 32 from Frontier, Ryan Pear, the guy who just ended up getting that great touchdown from Frontier, comes back with a really nice play and a nice tackle to make it second down and 10. Yeah, no gain on the play, so we'll bring up second down. Looked like he wanted to throw it, but didn't have it a receiver downfield and then decided to just try and tuck it and run, which isn't a bad, uh, bad play in a situation like that, but great pursuit by Frontier. Hello. 
seems like a really long quarter. I don't know uh, <laughs> if they, they they ended a quarter and didn't tell us, or but uh, may, maybe they're rolling right along here. But at least we do know one thing. We got a 6-6 six, six tie. That's what we do now. Actually, we got an 8-6. Eight, six. I 8-6. Eight, six. I'm sorry because right. of that really nice catch. And by the way, we couldn't see who that kid was that made that catch because of the way the numbers are with the glare of the sun. And once again, Arsenal keeps it. This time he gets swarmed and brought down in the backfield for about a four-yard loss. A group stop for the Red Hawks okay. in the backfield. Okay, thank you. Uh, one of the uh, fans, well, it's probably his parents, probably yeah. one of his parents. Hey, that always helps out when you can get a parent that can help us out as well. So, uh, Matt Talega. We, yeah, we weren't able to uh, weren't able to see that gentleman. So Matthew Talega was the one with the Matthew Talega made a nice catch in the back of that end zone right there with a really nice pass by Dion. So we're gonna we're gonna do something here in just a second, Chris. We're gonna mention our frontier cheerleaders because we do have a name of these ladies. So we will do that in just a few minutes, and we can talk about them. We, maybe we can get that in during our halftime show because we'll have a little time to do that. And hopefully we'll be able to catch them in a routine at some point. Yeah. Looks like they're getting ready to do a cheer right now. That's right. All right. <clears throat> so that's going to be a loss of about three. It'll bring up third and 13 from the technically the 28-yard line. You know, Talega's quite a name around here, yeah, that's man. Correct. That's correct. Watch out for those Talegas, man. I'm telling you. Well, I know that uh, yeah. there's a young man that Played for Franklin Tech a while back, not that long ago. Yeah, Talega. Spencer yeah, Talega. Spencer Talega, man. That kid was a good athlete. And then uh, you know, watch out for those Talegas, I'm telling you. And here's a handoff up the middle. First down yardage and more. Whoa, he's and gone. he broke it. All the way down for the touchdown. And that's going to be, I believe, Gavin Arsenal, the Gavin quarterback. Arsenal. What a play right there by Gav. And he comes up with a huge run right there for the Bulldogs. Now it's 12-8. Wow, that was, a, that was a great play. And again, it looked like it was going to be a broken play, but he got out a little bit of a seam and just took it straight down and just outran everybody. Yeah, and you got to give credit where credit's due. That offensive line for the Bulldogs opened that bad boy right up. And he was able to be take his small body and go right through. And he was gone. So that makes it... 12 to 8 on the two point conversion attempt upcoming, which would make it 14 to 8 if they can hit this. So we've had three scores on three long runs. All right, here we go. Two point conversion to Lega. It's a big two point conversion, by the way. Under center. And the inside handoff was actually fumbled and fall, fallen on. And so the two-point conversion fails, so we'll come back up the field with the score. Franklin County 12, Frontier 8. This is Pee Wee Football on Frontier Community Access Television. I want to thank our underwriters. Thank you so much for being a part of our broadcast. Taraz at the Country Club of Greenfield. Also by Dunkin' Donuts, the Mata family locations in Greenfield. Sunderland in South Deerfield. Also by Bobby C's DJ Service, Attorney Leah Phillips in Greenfield, and by CPA Alex Siano in Greenfield. Thank you very much, folks, for being a part of our broadcast here today. Something special that we have a chance to do here on the FCAT. Yeah, it's very exciting to be able to do this. Of course, if you're watching this on another public access, we're going to try and get this around to as many access centers as possible because there's kids all over the area who are part of this. and It's very true. It's a chance if you're a football fan to get a look at the future. And right now, there's a couple of names you want to keep an eye on, I think, moving forward, and, and including the last uh, man who scored, Gavin Arsenal, with all 73 pounds of him with a huge touchdown run. He's a good athlete. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, really, really liked the running of Bala, and boy, what a great run. That was made by Ryan Pear. That was a great cutback, too, for that big touchdown for Frontier. And what a great game so far. Very exciting. So it's first and 10 from the 40 of Frontier. And you're right, Bob. I'm not sure how long this quarter. Maybe they're just playing one half and then one half. I don't know. How yeah. I mean, maybe they're just not telling us 
because uh, we're, you know, like I said, the time is literally, the clock is literally being run on the field. So, because there's no way this is just the first quarter. We're, no. we're almost at halftime here, I think. I would think. So Frontier comes up, and we have trips to the left. One back. And a slant pass incomplete. And that was just ahead of the line of scrimmage. So technically it was a pass. It wasn't a lateral, but that could have been a lateral. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And well, you know what happened on that play is the guys that were on trips, they started to run. They didn't wait. They right. didn't wait for the ball. I think Dion had a plan, but the other guys started to run first. I think they tried to take one or two steps forward. And that was unfortunately too much because that pass was definitely incomplete. Second and 10. And they go back to the double wing, which has been sort of their bread and butter formation throughout this game. And the pitch goes on the inside. Another nice hole and brought down Ooh. with a nice tackle as off to the races was number 22. Big save right there by the Bulldogs. Number 21, I'll tell you right now, he was the one who saved the day right there. That could have been big trouble. Nice job right there by Braden Sloan White. And that was RJ Kaczynski with the run. Picks up about five, third and five from about the 45. Yeah, and Braden Sean White, that was a huge play right there by him being able to make that tackle. Brings up a third down and five. Double wing again. And the pitch goes to the right side. Good pursuit. Is that back number 45? He's got first down yardage down the right sideline and out of bounds. Nice run right Into there. Into Franklin County territory. That's number 45. We don't have on our, oh, actually we do. Harrison LaFlamme. Harrison LaFlamme. Nice job by Harrison. That was a great play. Boy, talk about a workout. That kid had to go from one end of the field all the way to the other. Picks up a huge first down for Frontier. And they're in good field position right now. The question is, how much time is there left in this half for Frontier? Harrison LaFlamme gets him down to about the 43, which is actually the 33 of Franklin County with a great run. Again, coming out of that double wing to the right side. That double wing formation is not something you often see in, in football around the area. I mean, Ware uses it uh, somewhat in the high school game, but you don't see that a lot on the high school level. Sometimes Mohawk has been known to use that. Depends on what you have for personnel in the backfield, but a double wing formation is a good, fundamental, solid offensive set that if run properly is tough to defend. I agree. And really, if you got a really good line and you could be able to block well, double wing could be very beneficial. That's Correct. For sure. It all depends on what kind of a line you've got and also what kind of ends you have. Yes. If they can get out there, flash out, and, and take out that defensive end, then you've got yourself. Exactly, because if you can be able to be an end and you end up pinching your block inside, now they've got the owl hole outside, right. which is exactly what happened on that last play. And firing oh. on first down, incomplete. Wow, what a great pass right there by Dion. Incomplete pass though. It was intended for number 45 and boy, that was right there in his hands too. That was the flame again, he was there. Wow, but that was again. Landon, Landon Clark had it man and it just came out of his hands. So nice throw right there by Dion. Oh Chris, that was tough. And once again, I'm looking at the wrong <laughs> roster. <laughs> I apologize. But yeah, that was a, uh, I'm just gonna put this away here. Yeah. Landon Clark um, had the ball right in his hand. Beautiful pass by Dion, too. He's going to try it again. Dion. Pass out of the backfield complete. To oh. number 43 and brought down at about the 40 yard line. Wow, that was a really nice job by number 43 of Frontier. He sort of put a smack on the guy from the Bulldogs. Nice job right there by Nolan Stafford. And another completion right there by Dion. Two really nice passes in a row by this young quarterback. And that big run was by Landon Clark earlier. So, that was, again, great, great, great little offensive set. Picks up about three yards, but it's fourth down and about seven. Like, looks like uh, things might be. Uh... No, it's a third down. I don't know how it's third down, man. I, mean, I thought it was. Yeah, I, that's, that's got a. That can't be third down. 
Well, that's what it reads across I the guess field. Yes, it does. Yep. So third down from the 40. All right. And Brandon De uh, Braden Dion rather brings his guys up. And he rolls right. Quick screen pass, complete, but not nice. much gainage. Nice tackle right there by the Bulldogs. Great job right there by number 15 of the Bulldogs. Making a nice play on that. And that was Clark who was brought down again at the original line of scrimmage. Now it's fourth down. And they're going to go for it. Oh, why not? Big stop right here, though, for the Bulldogs if they can stop the momentum. Nice job passing, though, by Dion. And here goes Dion rolling out, fires it downfield, incomplete. Oh, wow, and he had another receiver that was wide open, and he had it right in the kid's arms, too. Another beautiful pass right there by Dion. That kid's got a nice arm. Matthew and that is, it looks like the end, I believe, of the first half. All right. We played one half, and the score is Franklin County 12, Frontier 8. We're watching TV League Football on Frontier Community Access Television. And Chris, we want to thank our underwriters once again. We want to thank Taraz and the Country Club of Greenfield, also by Dunkin' Donuts with locations in Greenfield, Sunderland, and South Deerfield. Also by Bobby C's DJ Service, Attorney Leah Phillips of Greenfield, and by CPA Alex Siano in Greenfield. Thank you all for being a part of our broadcast here today. So an entertaining first half, three very long touchdown runs, and, uh, and now we're at halftime of uh, the Pee Wee game. And again, we'll have this game immediately followed by the junior game between these same two programs, Franklin County and Frontier. I want to uh, recognize I do have a roster here of the Frontier cheerleaders for the Pee Wees, and we can run down some of the girls' names here. We have Olivia Donovan. Also, we have Jillian LaValle. We have uh, Jerrica Leno. Also, we have Haley Manser. We have Liliana Marciano. Jordan Martin. Also, we have Eliza Montmany. Also, we have Allison Pachurik, Ava Spirits, Kayla Trudin, also Annalyn, Annala, uh, Analia Tudrin, and Rain Wanzi. That's quite the name. That's Analia. Nice. I like that name. Very pretty. The Franklin County Bulldog cheerleaders are on the other side of the field right now, entertaining their, their sideline. And it's, it's great, I think, to have the, the full complement of both the cheerleaders. On, on, and, and this is something that's part of a lot of these programs they have the full cheerleading squad and that's something that i've noticed on the high school level depending on the school you either have a huge squad or a very very small squad it depends on again on on who comes out and who gets involved but yep. um it's it, cheerleading is one of those things that's still a very big part of high school football and, and football in general exactly you know i'm taking a look and looking around the field here and i'm seeing some of these families that are here and their children and grandchildren are playing some football at one time, too, you know. And like I said earlier, we were talking about a couple of the coaches of the Frontier team. You know, Coach Scott Dredge, of course, was a former coach of Frontier. And you look at Crystal Point, uh, his son Jaden plays. Jaden, of course, plays for the Frontier team, which a lot of kids from Turner's Falls are on this Frontier team. Right. So it was able to be a nice way for Frontier and Turner's to merge together to be able to have the two towns and the two areas together. And of course, Crystal Point, as you know, is the head coach, and uh, he'll never let you admit this, but it is now the Thunder. And uh, <laughs> he doesn't want you to ever think that it's any different than Indians, but it surely, it surely is now the Thunder. They still gotta get a logo for that. They still need a logo. You know, they did all that work to make the changes, but they still don't have a logo. So there you go, that's uh, how things have rolled. And of course, if we go way back, Chris, you and I, we had, uh, you know, back when we were kids, we remember them as the good old Frontier Redskins back in the yes, day, Chris. That's right. When we were playing football, it was the Frontier Redskins. It was not the Red Hawks. In fact, if you look right over in the corner here if you, as you leave the field, if you ever come to Frontier, there's actually a, a monument that says Redskins. Does it and, still? It's still there. And I remember when that change was made. That was highly controversial then, and people were, were upset. And, and I think that eventually... The Red Hawk thing. I think the Red Hawk uh, logo, I think, has been really a good thing. It's been, if it were something crazy or a strange, you know, I'm not saying Thunder is a strange logo, but right. people got used to Red Hawk pretty quickly. They did. 
And it's funny because the change was made, and my brother uh, Aaron was the uh, head baseball coach for 10 years at Frontier. And, you know, it was weird because him as a player back in the day remembered him as the Redskins, and of course they were the Red Hawks when he became coach. Well, it's going to be nice here. We got the cheerleaders coming out to be able to do something with the halftime show. So hopefully we can get a nice picture of them being able to do their routine out on the field. In fact, why don't, we're going to step aside. We're going to let this okay, sort of speak for itself. Then we'll come back and we'll talk more about the state of football. This is Frontier Community Access Television coverage of Pee Wee Football. Okay, second half action I'm coming. Before we get to the second half of this uh, very entertaining Frontier Franklin County game, let's talk a little bit about the state of football. And you mentioned numbers, and the reason why programs like this are so important, Bob, is because numbers are down in certain programs, and I think specifically about the Mohawk Warriors. I mean, and I never thought it would come to a situation where we might actually have the possibility of not having a Mohawk Warriors football program, but right now the numbers are such that they only dressed 14 kids for the latest Friday night game. They had 10 on the field uh, after some injuries in week one. And if those numbers don't hold, the Mohawk Warriors may not be able to put a team on the field for the balance of the season if, if the numbers keep going down. That's a which tragedy. Would, which would make our second team locally that, that that would happen to because Pioneer could not field the team this year and they're now merged with Turner's. Question is, is would the rival that's always been a rival end up being a merged program between Frontier and Mohawk? Well, that's, because that's, that would be the best alternative, I think, right there. Either that or, I, I'm not sure, maybe Frontier merges with Greenfield? Yep. I mean, are there Mohawk merges with Greenfield? I don't know. Yeah, but, but I would think it's either going to be, it would either be Greenfield or Frontier if they end up not having a program. And boy, that would be so disappointing for Coach Doug McLeod, who absolutely is a huge, huge warrior guy. I mean, the guy's been around the game for a lot of years, and he's also been a part of their baseball team for a long time. That would just be so devastating for Coach McLeod if he wasn't able to continue the program up at Mohawk. And I really wish that more kids would uh, come out and play. That underscores the importance of programs like this, where kids are learning the game at a young age, where they are you know, learning the fundamentals, and where they are uh, where they're getting an exposure to it. Short kickoff and return back up to about the 40-yard line, which is where the Frontier team will take over. First and 10. First and 10 for the Red Hawks. And again, the Franklin County leads 12 to 8. We had three rushing touchdowns, long runs in that first half, and one two-point conversion pass, which was caught by Matt Talega. So it turned out to be a very nice first half. And 12-8, very close game right now here to kick off the second half between these two teams. Chris, just want to say that it's wonderful to have the FCAT here today. This is the first time the FCAT's had a chance to be a part of uh, youth football. And we want to thank the staff, you, Chris, and all of your helpers here today to be able to make that possible. 
Alec and Megan, our man in the cameras, Bobby and I are man on the mics, and we have a first and 10 situation. Again, double wing formation for the Frontier Red Hawk Pee Wees. And the pitch goes on the left side, and good pursuit by Franklin County. Flag down behind the players. Probably gonna be a block in the back, I think. Yep, and it looks like it's definitely gonna be against the Bulldogs because if it's Blood a block in the, in the back, that is definitely gonna be on the offense. That could be, uh, what if it goes 10 yards for that? I don't know what the call would be at this level, but. Yeah, they're yeah, going back. They're going back 10. So block in the back against Frontier. That's a 10 point, 10 yard penalty. That makes it first and 20. I think, but are they, is, now they're bringing it back, back up. For the now I'm not sure what's going on. The referee is bringing it back up to the original line of scrimmage. But they, uh, they declined oh, it. They, okay. They declined it. Okay, so that's a loss to down. Bulldogs have declined it. Second and 10 from the original line of scrimmage. Second and 10. So that penalty was declined. Coach Rich Berg decided to do a decline on that play and want to try to make them have to score, you know, be able to get the first down and two downs because they're allowed, otherwise they're going to have to punt it. And the pitch goes now on the right side. Good pursuit by Franklin County. Run around the end. And that was Landon Clark, who's out of bounds at about the 43, looks like. So it looks like it's going to be a third down and about eight. Yeah, they're going to say he got out of bounds at about the 42. We'll third down and about eight. Board third board eight board. for the Frontier team. Again, good pursuit by Franklin County there. Yeah, Didn't really to go. good job. You know, they did a nice job being able to run him out of bounds. Still, these, these, these ends are, I got to tell you something. If these ends could just pinch just a little bit on a block, boy, these backs are going on the outside. So if you can just pinch a little bit and be able to block that guy on the end, boy, there could be some more daylight for some of these runners. Well, that's what I mean game. about the double wing. That, yeah. that gives you that option. Absolutely. You're They're right. going to run that again. Fumble snap and dead ball. And Deanne was able to fall on it. Looks like uh, there'll be no gain on the play. Yep. So now it's fourth down and eight. Now you, you know, if I'm if I'm frontier, I'm punting the ball right now, man. I'm not taking a chance. Yeah, I would say this, that would make a lot of sense, but you don't know if, yep. if punting is part of what they do here. Yeah, well, Coach James is going to have to make that decision on whether his team will punt the ball or if they're going to try to go for it here on fourth down. I think with the field position being in the situation they're in, that they're probably better off being able to kick it. And it looks like that's what they're gonna do. Yep. So we will see our first punt of the day. High snap. And they boot it away. And it's taken at about the 31, but there's a whistle. I'm not sure what happened. It looked like nobody moved on the snap, which is, and I don't know if. Do they just catch the ball and that's it? There's no movement on the play? I, I don't know. Rated Looks D. like it. I guess that's it. Wow, D. nice play by Arsenal making that catch. I say it's a good thing that he didn't run it back. I know, because, because he, he could have hit. He, he sure did. Because nobody him. moved. That, that, that was unusual. But that's, I guess, the rule is you just take it where it's gone. Well, you and I, Chris, are a little bit virgin to some of the rules here <laughs> of uh, how things roll here in Pee Wee football. I guess maybe I'll have to polish up on a couple of things if we do this again later in the season, but uh, definitely didn't know that they don't return a punt in well, youth, on the peewee level at least. I imagine the juniors they do though. Right. I just think that maybe at the peewee level is the is the division that they may not. So it's first and 10 from the 36, call it the 26 of Franklin County. They have the lead 12 to eight and the ball. Don't know how much time is left in the half. Because I know that in that first half, they really didn't even let us know when that uh, first quarter ended. So, uh, our, our I'm not sure they did a first quarter. I think it was just a running time for a 20 minute yeah. half. Maybe like. that's what they do. A little bit of a chin strap adjustment from one of the Franklin County players. Now we're ready to go. And a little jump at the line, it looks like. A lot of movement on the Franklin Ball County Bulldogs Franklin here County. today. A lot of movement. Well, again, that's that's fundamentals and that's just sure. timing. It's one of those things that you expect at this level. Kids are just learning the game. 15. Oh, yeah. 
But boy, I was taking a look at the Bulldogs. Their, their offensive line, huge. Got a big offensive line for Pee Wee division. First and 15 from the 31 of Franklin County. And Gavin Arsenal brings his team up. Right there by the cheerleaders. Right there. Now in motion to the right side, and another whistle. Caleb Pizzuto was in motion. Flying behind the play, false start is the call. Wow, that's two penalties in a row right there. Coach Berg putting his head on, hand on his head, saying, Wow, guys, come on now. We're gonna listen. First and 20 is now. So the ball going in the wrong direction for Franklin County is they're now gonna start from their own 26 which is more like the 16. And this is not as a coach that you, what, something you want to see. No, because it's a little bit on the sloppy side. Again, you're watching Pee Wee Football. You're on Frontier Community Access Television. Chris Collins and Bobby C. And we are here on a beautiful Sunday at Frontier. All right, first and 20. Another one. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, things are getting a little frustrating right now. Even the parents are yeah. like, come on, guys, you know? You just gave them 15 yards. And what you're doing now is you end up getting yourself in a big hole, but you're also giving Frontier, when they get the ball, if you don't run a big play, really good field position. That's right. And, and especially in a 12-8 game right now. Exactly. You've got a four-point lead. This is not the direction you want to be going exactly. without having run a play. <laughs> it's true. Three five-yard penalties in a row against the Bulldogs. It's a big spot right here. First. And a long, long time. Let's say long. <laughs> and they set up the I formation this time. And rolling it left and keeping it is Arsenal. Running at the outside. And he gets swarmed by a sea of red and brought down at about the 20. So not much going there. Yeah, nice job right there by Frontier. Frontier had a really nice play right there by their player number 35. 35 for Frontier is Brody Whittle. Brody Whittle did a nice job right there on defense for Frontier, and that turned out to be no gain. Yep. So you're talking right now, it's a while, man. You're talking second down and 25 for the Bulldogs. From the 20, which is really the 10. Yep. When you're running an 80-yard field. Right. It's uh, 10 taken off on each end of the field is what they do. They run from the 10 to the 10. So they set the I formation up again. So right now, Franklin County is in a bit of trouble. And it's going to be a keeper up the middle by Arsenal. And he gets maybe five yards, maybe six, to about the 26-yard line. That's going to bring down a third down, Chris, and probably about uh, 15, I think. Yeah, well, I, I think we're more like 20, probably 20, 21. 20. Yeah. So third and long third again. Third and long again, yep. And you you know, you only got one play to do this because you're gonna have to punt the ball if you can't make the first down on this play if you're the Bulldogs. So we're gonna see Frontier have their punt, and if the Bulldogs don't end up getting a good play here, they're gonna most likely have to punt as well. So we'll be able to see both punters for each team if the Bulldogs can't convert here. So third and 21. And they've got in motion, the right side. Fumble! Recovered by Franklin County, and they're gonna have to punt him away. Yeah, they're gonna have to punt the ball. Not a great possession for Franklin County. Matter of fact, that was a really broken down series right there by the Bulldogs. Very frustrated for that, that's for sure. Might have some fatigue setting in. Oh, wait, now they're going to. There's our quarter. 
Yeah. Now they got the quarter, yeah. now we're going to switch ends. <laughs> so they did actually have a quarter this time. So we're going to go to the other end, the switch ends, and when we come back up the field, the score right now is Franklin County 12 and Frontier 8. This is the football Frontier and we want to thank our underwriters once again for being a part of our broadcast here today. Taraz at the Country Club of Greenfield and their great owner of Oz. Thank you so much. Also by the Mata family, Dunkin' Donuts with locations in Greenfield, Southern and South Deerfield. Also by Bobby C's DJ Service, Attorney Leah Phillips of Greenfield, and by CPA Alex Sino. Thank you all so much for helping us out with this great broadcast of youth football here on the FCAT. So we're going to start over. First and 10, going the other way. Frontier will have the ball at the 39. To start our final quarter of game number one. And Brandon Dion, Braden Dion, excuse me, with the set up on the, and now we have a whistle, movement on the line again. Wow, this one's gonna be against Frontier. <laughs> So really, if you think about it, Chris, we ended up with four penalties in a row for the Bulldogs and one on the first play of this series for Frontier. Five penalty calls in a row between both teams. And again, wow. not, not what you want to see, but these are, again, PV players and young sure. kids. And they're, still, they're still learning the game. Of course. And you know, and I, I think what's good about the fact that the refs are calling it is, is that they need to know when they're doing something wrong so that they can get better. And that's why the refs are out there. They're making those calls. First and 15 from the 44. <clears throat> Double wing again for Braden Dion. The pitch goes inside and just swarmed under by Franklin County. And Franklin County defense has been superior. They are fantastic. What a great job right there by number 55, D'Angelo Brown from the Bulldogs comes up number with a huge D'Angelo tackle Brown on the play for the dogs. The and a loss of about four. So now, you literally have right now a second loss down and 17 for Frontier. So the penetration of that line by, by the Franklin County is really, really good. Off. I'll tell you right now, if it wasn't for that awesome cutback, in that great run that was by Pear back in the first first half. They'd be scoreless right now. Dion, passing, incomplete. As a good idea as he was pressured the whole time. Yeah, D'Angelo Brown once again. D'Angelo Brown doing a nice job. Number 55, see that number 55 from the Dogs. He is all over the place on defense for the dogs and did a nice job and got right in there in Dion's face as he was trying to throw that ball, which was another incomplete pass. But that was mainly because of the pressure. All right, that was, that was a pretty good pass considering the yeah, situation. Absolutely. So third and 17, ball spotted at the 48 of Franklin County. Double wing again. And the pitch goes on the left side to number 33. Oh, big run right there. Big run down the left sideline by right Lucas here. Day. Yeah, and I'll tell you right now, now he made things interesting. Now you're Frontier, you're going for it. You're now in a situation where you're going for it. That was a nice run. It's gonna bring up fourth and nine from the 38. Yeah, and you know, right now, you, Maybe they're gonna run that double wing again. Well, that's, that worked that, that time. Yeah, that was a great job right there. I'll tell you, the double wing has worked out really well for Frontier in this one. But I think that when they try and run up the middle, or they try, I think that they, the front cover county line is just too big. It's tough to, and they're penetrating very, very well in those stunts. That's what I've noticed is uh, the Bulldogs, their strength, from what I've seen, is their line on both ends, defense and offense. They definitely have very good linemen. Fourth down, double wing again. And the pitch goes to the right side this time. And this is Clark, and he's brought down at about the 38, regular, and that little turnover will take place. Nice job right there by a little guy, number two for Greenfield. Little guy right there, number two. Uh, looks like Caleb Pizzuto. 
Nice job right there by the little guy, making the tackle on the play. Hey, some of these guys, they're playing big. Well, again, that's a, that's a case where the end has to kind of, <laughs> they have to kind of stay at home and see what's going to happen. And he did, and he did do that too. He didn't try to pinch in, which was a nice job right there by Pizzuto. If you're going to play against the uh, double wing, you got to be able to open to attack, and that's exactly what he did right there. Yes, exactly. And you know, if, if you listen to your coaches, a lot of your coaches are going to tell you that you got to be able to stay home. Don't get too aggressive. Because if you end up pinching in too much, they're going to take Don't that outside, and they're going to take it right to the house. The or if they have a good cutback, then, yeah, then like <laughs> either way, you got to exactly. be very, very oh, sure about yourself. You have to keep that head on the swivel. Yep. First to 10 now for Franklin County from the 39 yard line. So the dogs have the lead and the ball. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is unreal. And I'll tell you something right now the coaches are really frustrated. And as they should, you know, when, you, when, you, when this is your fifth penalty that you've had on offense in just the last two series. You know, now he's calling a timeout. This is where Coach Burr is going to say, listen, guys, you got to listen. You have to listen. Well, they had Pizzuto going in motion, and it looked like there's just not a not a consistent KP going on. I want to thank our underwriters for today. I want to thank Taraz at the Country Club of Greenfield, also by Duncan Donuts, the Mata family. Locations in Greenfield, Southern and South Deerfield. Also by Bobby C's DJ Service. Attorney Leo Phillips in Greenfield. And by CPA Alex Siano. So I want to thank our underwriters for being a part of our broadcast here today. We're here on the FCAT Youth Football. Very excited to be here today, Chris. Yes, it's exciting, I think, for us. Certainly, this is something we wanted to do the last couple of years. We're doing a lot of high school coverage. It's always good to get the young kids involved. And thank you for setting this up because we really wouldn't be here without uh, you having provided the impetus for it. Well, it was uh, something that they wanted to do, and I had a chance to have a nice chat with attorney Leah Phillips, whose son plays on the team. And they're very excited that we're here today as well. And we are glad to be here on a beautiful Sunday afternoon. Inside handoff, nice cutback, and up to the original line of scrimmage. Right, there was a very nice right run the right there by Greenfield. I think that, that was Talega. Uh, that was uh, number 10. It was number 10. Yeah, number 10. So it looks like they uh, handed the ball that time to Tyler Gerard. So Gerard gets back up to about to the original line of scrimmage, maybe a yard ahead. So it's second and nine from the 40. It is warm. It's gotta be warm it's really here. started. It really started to warm up. It really did. But they were coming from mid 80s today, so we're, we're there. We're definitely there. I formation now behind Dion. And oh, nice cutback! Nice cutback down the left sideline, and no one is going to catch him. Gavin Arsenal looks like he's going to the house. You know, he got down. He got tackled on the play at the two. So he's at the two yard line. Really nice tackle number made on the play. On the Trying to the see Bulldogs. that young guy's number there for Frontier. All the way down to Looks about like number 43 line. for Frontier number was able to Nolan get Stafford his paws the out there to be able to make that play. So nice play right there by number 43. Nolan Stafford to be able to prevent the Bulldogs from scoring that touchdown. Great run by Gavin Arsenault. That was a really great run right there by that youngster. Yeah, and I thought he was going to go in, but it's going to be first and goal from about the four. Arsenal got a great block, first almost took it to the house. Well, like I said, the offensive line has done a wonderful job for the Bulldogs here today. Definitely the strength of this Bulldogs team is their line on both offense and defense. I'll tell you right now, though, the quarterback for Frontier, I think Dion has a wonderful arm. High formation, Arsenal up the middle. I think he's and in. He's in. Nope. Oh say he was down. boy, we went down. What about half yard line? Yeah. Oh yeah. That baby's down to the half. But boy, with the big dogs they got on the line, I would just uh, ride behind my center, yeah, baby. Same play. That right run behind the center. Brings it all the way to about the one half yard line. 
same play, I think, for sure here. Oh, yeah. You're going you're gonna to ride right behind the big guys. And, that, and I'll tell you, the center for this for Bulldogs, Bulldogs team is a big boy. And I'll tell you right now, you take your two guards, you, you, you put all three of them right together. Cleat to cleat. Just have Gavin go right over the top. Nope, they decide to hand it off inside. And they cut back to the outside, and did he get in? He's in! Touchdown! Touchdown, Bulldogs! And that'll make the score 18 to 8 with a two point conversion upcoming. And that Touchdown, was number 13. Bulldogs. He's been hot for that team, Davian Bala. That's his second touchdown of the game. So Bala comes up with another big play. And there it is, the Bulldogs. They can really take command in this one if they end up picking up this two-point conversion. Well, I'll tell you, it's a much better drive than the last one. And they, they've gotten on the same page in terms of their cadence, and that's, that's six points with the chance for eight here. To make it 20. Nope. No, nope. another movement right there on the guard. It was on the right guard. <laughs> the coach from yeah, Franklin he County said just going, jumped. Come on. They're going to knock him back five. So that makes it a little bit more difficult to get the two point conversion. Ball start well, look on what Bulldogs. they've done in the NFL, Chris, now. I mean, uh, you're kicking your extra point now from like the 35 yard line now in the NFL, making things a little bit more challenging for the kickers. And it's funny because those guys are the pros and they've missed extra points. So they line up again for the two point conversion. It's gonna be a tough one. You gotta earn this bad boy here. And inside handoff is brought down. The two point conversion goes back up the field. And the two point conversion is no and we want to thank our underwriters here today. Thank you so much to Taraz and the Country Club of Greenfield, also by Duncan Donuts, the Mata family. They have locations in Greenfield, Sunderland, and South Deerfield, also by Bobby C. DJ Service, Attorney Leah Phillips of Greenfield, and by CPA Alex Siano. Thank you all so much for being able to help us out here in our broadcast. Chris Collins and Bobby C. We're hanging out here at Frontier Regional. It's our first broadcast of some Pee Wee football on a Sunday between Greenfield and Frontier. And boy, Chris, it surely has been a pleasure. Looks like a Frontier player might have been shaken up. Yeah, that's why they get the kids all down on one knee. Which I think is a great thing. I, yep. and I see, you see that tradition carried on in the high school, too. Yes, exactly. When there's a high school injury, everybody hits a knee, and that's something they learn in this league. Yep. It's a good thing because it shows courtesy. Right. And that's exactly what they need. And, you know, thank God that the paramedics are here for these games because some of these kids, they do end up getting injured. And it's also nice to know that they're dealing with the right safety precautions to be able to have somebody that's medical staff personnel at these games for these kids. Well, Frontier's got some work to do. They trail 18 to eight. As we're in the fourth quarter of this one, of course the junior game follows right after. You, know, you got to throw the ball. I mean, now, now you got to try to throw the ball because you don't want the clock to run too far on you. See, they're going to throw the ball. That's a smart move right there. A little short slant pass in the flat. And they get up to about uh, pretty close to first down yards, maybe a couple yards short. Boy, I'll tell you, Dion throws a nice ball, Chris. The kid's got a nice ball. Matter of fact, I will say this. He's had a couple of receivers that had the ball right in the midst. And they were missed the opportunities for this kid. But this kid's pretty much had almost every pass on the money for Frontier here today. Quick timeout called by, I think, Franklin County. Now they're going to roll the clock, and here we go. I think the reason why they're calling their timeouts is because uh, they, you know, they're down. They're down by yeah. 10. They need two scores. The most they can get is eight points in a with a touchdown and a two-point conversion, that's not going to be enough. And so, a long field still. still yeah, to go. exactly. We go back to the double wing. Out of the shotgun. Look at that. Nice throw, too. Yeah, Just Jayden fired it downfield. Pass was intended for number 30. Matt Talega incomplete. Yeah. Nice try for Telega across the middle. Just wasn't able to get there. 
It will be so now you got third the down in about a yard and a half here. So third and a yard and a half for Correct and Frontier. Third of the yard. I think you get the first down and then set something else up. I agree. I agree. And I go back to the air. The only difference, though, is with running time, you go to the air, it does not stop the clock. Well, they, they um, um, yeah, that's very true. That is very true, the, the Pee Wees. But I don't know if they have a situation where they're at a certain time where they do that, yeah. stop time. I don't have that answer. I really don't. I'm pretty, oh, another offensive. Wow. Well, they've gone to the double wing shotgun. They had two receivers to the left, and somebody jumped. And if it's on... Looks like yeah, a neutral zone frontier. infraction by the Bulldogs. Oh, that's going to bring you back. Now you're at uh, third down and six and a half. All spotted at about the 45. Correction, yeah. false start. Oh, that's six yards. Yep, I'll call it 35 for our purposes because of the 80 yard field. So that was not a penalty frontier one of the two. Double wing shotgun formation again. And he's going to throw. Incomplete. Good pass, though. Good pass. Kid has a nice arm. And bring that'll bring up fourth down. For number 43, yeah, Dion definitely can throw it. Sure can. Might be a future uh, player here for Frontier. He might be one of the guys we might be talking about as a quarterback in the future. I think it's a name. If he sticks with the game, it's a name you're going to hear more. I agree. Looks very good. Fourth and about seven. The shotgun is a new wrinkle that they just threw thrown in. It's been double wing under center for most of the game. Yeah. Now they go trips to the right, so they're going to try and ride that arm with Dion. Offset eye. And he fires it downfield. Intercepted by Franklin County. And that's 45. Gavin Arsenal. Boy, Gavin Arsenal has had a great game here for the Bulldogs. On both sides of the ball. Big play right there by number three. He has really done it well. He's done a nice job as the quarterback. He's done a nice job making some plays on D. And he's made some nice runs. And that's your game. That's how the game won. The final 18 score. Eight. Final score was Franklin County 18 and Frontier 8. As both teams line up to shake hands. And we'll have a brief break before we start the shooting. And once again, before we uh, get into our next game, we want to say a big thank you to our underwriters here today. Thank you so much for Terraza at the Country Club of Greenfield, also by Dunkin' Donuts, locations in Greenfield, Sunderland, and South Deerfield with the Bonham family, also by Bobby C's DJ Service, attorney Leah Phillips in Greenfield, and by CBA Alex Siano. So, quick break, we're going to come back and bring you a junior game. You're watching Franklin County Football, plus you're going to be the rest of the 